Hi, welcome to Local Flavor. I'm here in Moreland at Ant Face Community Kitchen and we have a repeat guest, Olga Dietry. Yes. Do you recognize her? She looks <laughs> a lot different to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about a year. Yeah, so, yes. And you've had big news since then, right? I have. I, we had a baby boy who's almost 10 months now. Oh my goodness, yes, he's probably starting flies. to be wiggly. Yes, he sure is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you made a German soup for us last time, which I still remember how to pronounce. Uh -huh. I'm, I just want to brag a little. Kaza soup. Eh? Very good. That's <laughs> right. That cheese hamburger soup. Correct. And so we're making another foreign soup. Is this yes. German or Russian? This is actually a Russian soup. It's a very typical, very traditional and well-known Russian, Russian soup. It's borscht. Um, so many of you might have heard of it. and. Um, most people hear about it because it's very unique in its coloring. It's a red soup, and so that, that's not that often that you have a vibrant color like that. So we'll cook that today. Um, I grew up with it. My mom used to cook it all the time, still does. My husband had never tried it before, and he absolutely loves it. And it's really great for a cold winter night or um, fall night, and it's even better the second day. So um, I hope you'll enjoy it, and it's super see. easy to make. And I have never tried it before. I have only, <laughs> like I've heard the word borscht. Yes. But I think I just read it in books maybe. Mm -hmm. So Most people have, yes. <laughs> and it's easy to make. It doesn't sound that awesome when you just list off the ingredients. Right. But once you try it, you're sold. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so, so we started off with um, some meat and we're just making some stock. I usually use pork. Um, I usually use a good big piece that has some good meat and also some fat and then um, I like to use meat cuts that have the bone in just because it gives additional flavor but it is up to you whatever you want to use so I actually used for this one a shoulder steak with the bone in um, I just check whatever is on sale um, roasts are great for that as well so whatever you can find at your local grocery store does the number of pounds matter or no it just depends on how big your pot is and how much you want to make okay. um, and you want to make sure that when you put it in your pot that it's covered by water completely so roasts are sometimes a little tougher and you might have to cut it into pieces so um, that's what I did. I just put it in water and I started boiling it before the show so we can get a head start. Um, I added a little bit of salt. You don't have to. You can salt it afterwards. It's up to you. So right now we basically it's boiling and just like a typical stock. I'm going to turn it up here a little yeah, bit. Take the lid. It's Careful it's hot. Ay, ay, ay. Yes. And so just like your stocks usually do whenever you start boiling meat it will kind of ooze this foam and you want to remove that foam because that's all the impurities in the meat and it basically will make your stock not as clear. Um, I'm pretty easy going about this. I usually just kind of use a spoon like here and spoon it out. Uh, depending on how picky you are about your uh, broth, you might want it a little bit more, done a little bit more thoroughly and you can always strain your broth after you kind of took the first impurities out. Um, I would recommend to finish boiling the meat first and then strain your broth if that's what you want to do. But my mom never cared enough to do it, so I don't. <laughs> I'm a lazy cook sometimes. Are we just going to use the broth or will the meat go into the soup too? The meat stays in the soup. Everything is, it's a one pot recipe, so that's really nice about it. That's another reason why don't like to strain because it just makes more yes more mess. more dishes that's right but again you can certainly do that if you like your broth to be clarified yeah so everything stays in this one pot and all the vegetables are going to go in there oop and you got to be careful to not start a fire here <laughs> it's <laughs> we we usually take this thing apart and clean it every time oh so. <laughs> i'm sure especially if you have messy cooks like me <laughs> At home we're messy too so I think that's okay so make sure that once you put this on your stove that you keep watching it and I'm actually gonna turn it down now because it's boiling quite a bit and once it starts boiling um, it's tougher to take the foam off so make sure you watch it as you bring it to a boil my mom used to ask us to get it started and then you know how kids are we just set it on the stovetop and then walk off and watch TV and before you know it it's all kind of boiled over and it's not very pretty because the broth actually, the foam actually disintegrates. So you don't want to do that. You want to take it off before it really gets to boiling while you're kind of getting it 
to that point. You have taken off more foam than I thought was going to come off. So. Uh huh. Yes. There's actually, and it keeps coming, so you're just going to have to stay on top of it. After you're done with this step, that's really the most labor intensive other than cutting, cutting the vegetables. After you're done with this, it's a really a set in and forget it recipe. Awesome. Well, let me ask you this. If someone were to strain it, should they, since you said it kind of changes a little, should they still take the foam off as much as they can? Yes, I would recommend that. I would recommend taking the foam off um, either way. And then once um, your meat is cooked and to the point that you like it to be, then you can kind of take it off the stove and you can let it cool down and then you can strain it. And then you're going to reuse the broth and I would still put the meat back in because then it continues cooking with the vegetables and oozing that flavor. So yes, I would absolutely do that. And honestly, the longer you cook the meat, the softer and more tender it's going to be. Um, if you have a nice big piece with a roast that has a bone in, um, I like to cook it for at least an hour to two hours because at that point it'll be so soft that it literally falls off the bone. So you don't even have to cut anything and you'll have your soup with nice chunks of meat in it without even having to do anything with it. Have you got this cut into two pieces or is it just I have not. Piece? I okay. just, yes, actually it was two pieces in the package, but I just put them in like they were. Okay. And I usually do unless it doesn't fit in my pot. I'm all about easy. <laughs> <laughs> but would it be okay if you, you know how some, well, you're using pork. Could you use beef? And if so, maybe the sure stew meat could. that you get with your beef that you never know what to do with if right. you get tired of beef right. stew. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure that would be great. I've never tried it with beef, beef, but I can't imagine that it wouldn't be good. What is not good with beef? So, <laughs> yes, I'm sure that would be just fine. And even if you wanted to just use the stew meat, stew meat, as I said, I like to use the bone because it gives additional flavor. But any, any meat you use for any soup or any stew will be great in this. Awesome. Well, should we okay. let it cook for a while yes, and I think come so. back when it's time to put in the vegetables? I, I think so. That sounds like a good idea. We'll come back when it's time to add some more stuff. Come on down to Bees Bargains at Smith Center, Kansas. We got the deals. We have a wide variety of inventory like soap, toiletries, toys, mini fridges, even kitchen tables. Everything is new at Bees Bargains, but it's all half the price. Yes, half price. That isn't just a good deal, that's a great deal. And with new items daily, our inventory is constantly changing. That means new, great deals are coming in by the truckload weekly. Bees Bargains at Smith Center. If you can't find a deal here, you can't find one anywhere. Gove County Medical Center provides compassionate care combined with today's latest technology. We offer a wide range of services to meet the growing needs of you and your family including surgical and swing bed services, cardiac and cancer rehab, as well as our pain clinic, long-term care, OB, and ongoing lactation assistance. Serving all of Northwest Kansas, our team of doctors and staff are committed to healing through caring. Visit govecountymedicalcenter.org and find us on Facebook to learn more. Welcome back to Local Flavor. Olga and I have been busy getting our vegetables ready and the meat has been cooking and she's gonna show us what um, it looks like right now. Yes, so basically right now you can see all the foam is kind of gone and you can see it looks a lot more like a broth and not just water. Here you go, Deb. Oh, you want me to oh, take okay. that? No, I'll take it. Oh, there you go. And you can see I did a somewhat okay job um, getting the, the the impurities off, but there's still some on the side, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this little spatula and take off whatever I can get. And as I said, I'm not too picky about it. It's nothing bad. It's nothing that is bad for you. It's just if you get into a little bit more um, elected, selected cooking, you're maybe a little more picky about what your food looks like. Yeah. We just care about what it tastes like, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to continue letting this cook and I'm going to shut the lid and I'm going to turn it up just a little bit because we want to keep it boiling because the longer you cook it, the more tender the meat gets, the more it falls off um, and falls apart in the pot and then also the more flavor your soup has. Were you needing these or not? Um, yes, I do. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, oh, you're good. Okay, so we're getting into getting our vegetables ready now. And I got some carrots here, some onions, and some potatoes. So you good base for any kind of soup. And we're just gonna go ahead and peel the potatoes. 
So we need a vote on how you're supposed to peel potatoes. <laughs> That's right. This is the safe way. <laughs> no. This is the way I do it. <laughs> no. Well, I don't know that either are safe because I've had some pretty bad bleeding from this way too. But. Well, my dad has always told me that I'm insane and that I will cut my wrist one day. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> yes, and you, you haven't been the first one to tell me so. <laughs> but so far I got both hands, so I think I'm good. I just need to pay attention to what I'm doing, I guess. Well, also, like you pointed out to me, that shape of a peeler would be hard yes, to use in this that's method. Right. That's right. So um, we're going to use two or three potatoes, depending on how big they are. Um, I have three here. I kind of prepared one oh. beforehand. Oh, I one. Um, and I use russet potatoes because I feel like they kind of go best in soup. Uh, but you can certainly use whatever potato you prefer. And I just kind of cut off the rest of here. Perfect. So once our potatoes are peeled, cut them lengthwise so that you have two nice sides. And then I just cut them in the middle. Pardon me. And then I just cut them like this so that you have somewhat big chunks. And I like my potatoes in the soup to actually have some texture some and have some body, yes. Um, and you also, the long, for how long you cook the soup, you don't want the potatoes to completely fall apart. So you do want bigger chunks so they're not completely falling apart and disintegrating in the soup. Otherwise, you could just put in powdered, that powdered potato. No, we, we don't. No, 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 no. Do not do that. I'm a big proponent of using any fresh ingredients you can. So you won't see any powdered stuff in my food, hopefully. Sorry, Justin McClung. No, no <laughs> instant right. potatoes. That's right. No instant <laughs> potatoes over here. Okay, so we got the potatoes cut. This is one. Let me get the other one here. Cut off some of the. Oh, you brought back spots. that knife that I love. Yes, I did, and actually have the peeler too. And I left that one at home, but I absolutely <laughs> love that. And after a year, it's still nice and sharp. Have not had to do any with it, anything with it. If you missed the Kaza Supe episode, this is a ceramic knife that it I is. fell in love with last year. It so. is. <laughs> okay, let me finish chopping that. There you go. And as I said, nice and rustic. Don't worry too much about cutting them very finely. Yeah, only okay. worry about cutting your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have an onion. I already cut half of it. I will cut the other half. Um, and that one I do like to chop a little finer just because I'm not a fan of big onion chunks in my soup. But again, that is just up to personal preference. And I just cut them into strips right here and then just into small cubes. There you go. Nice. All done. And finally, let's move the peels out of the way. And finally, we've got some carrots. So I kind of, we peel the carrots and then we cut them in half and then I just chop them. You can totally grate them if you wanted to, and that's probably even gonna make it better. My mom usually grates them. Oh, she but, did. Mm -hmm, yeah, it makes them nice and fine, but if you don't have a grater at home, you can just chop them and that's completely fine too. I think I would grate them because they might disintegrate and I wouldn't know there was carrots in it. Yeah. I have a long standing argument with the carrot. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like carrots? <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> okay, so we got all of our vegetables chopped. So at this point, we can start putting them in. And let's take a look at our meat. It's still nice and boiling. So do you need me so. to get you a plate so we can take the meat out and shred it? or? No, no, no. We're just going to leave the meat right in the pot. And it's going to be just fine with all the vegetables in. As I said, a one pot meal. So we're just going to leave it all in there. OK. I start with a, <laughs> I start with the potatoes because they usually took the longest to cook. And then I add the carrots and the onions. And then we're just going to keep, keep it cooking for a while. OK, and we have more stuff to add, but this needs to cook a while first, right? That's right. right. 
That's well, right. we'll keep putting our veggies in, just the ones we've already mm -hmm. cut up, and when we come back, we'll add the next series of ingredients. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammondAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Hi, welcome back to Local Flavor. We have let our vegetables cook in with the meat for about a half an hour and now we're ready to add the next series of more veggies. <laughs> yes, there's <laughs> lots of veggies in the soup so it is actually really really healthy for you too. So um, here's what it kind of looks like and you can start smelling some of that. I could smell the onion, I think. Yes, that's probably the most pungent smell. So you can see some of the flavor and some of the, the coloring coming up here with the carrots. It's kind of getting a little bit more orange. So now what we're doing, we will add cabbage. And again, I like it easy and I'm lazy, especially on weeknights. And I just bought a pack of coleslaw mix and just took the coleslaw mix. And it's a good, um, good amount for a big soup pot so you don't have to mess with, you know, measuring how much you're going to put in. But my mom always does it the old-fashioned way and she gets ahead uh, of gets, cabbage. Yeah, she gets a head of cabbage. You should have let me know because I have a head of cabbage that I only need to use like a fourth Half of. of. It. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we should have, we should have coordinated. Yes, that would have been great. But that way I don't have to chop it easier okay. either and it's much easier. So we're going to put that in kind of slowly. And I put in the cabbage almost, almost last just because it doesn't take nearly as long to cook. I don't really like my onions or carrots crunchy. I do kind of like them cooked in the soup. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I usually put them in first. Yeah, and this isn't fair. Now it's going to be double the carrot. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot or actually I didn't know you didn't <laughs> like carrots. I love carrots. So I actually, you're right. Went and got extra carrots because I don't feel like there's enough. It'll be neat in to it. see how they're different though with them being julienne yes. like that or shredded. Yeah, see, and again, I, if I just cook at home for my family, I care more about the flavor than the, the beauty of it. But of course, if you are a little bit more picky or if you're cooking for a special occasion, you might want to pay attention how you chop your vegetables. Thanks for now, mentioning that. Is this when I get to open the beets? You do. We're going to put the lid back on and turn it up a little and then we're going over here to open the beets. Okay, the reason I'm so excited about this is because we've had one of these at church for a long time and I have never learned how to use it. And this morning I kind of had to learn how to use it. Yes, so. because I did not bring my uh, <laughs> can opener. So watch this. I'm just... <gasps> oh, you do oh, not want to have your finger snap in that. Oh, I forgot to lift this. Okay, I didn't know what I was doing. Let's try it again. Oh, there you go. You see it go through. Then, then this is for giant cans, nice. so it goes pretty fast. Oh, my. Yes, yes. you is, see the color? Yeah, that's pretty. Yes. So, so excited. Now I'm going to be the can opener at church. Yes. Oh, honey. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. It's there all go. good. Okay, so this is kind of the the heart of the soup are the beets and there's not a lot of I don't know how many recipes there are with beets I bet a ton but that's not a very common thing to use however beets are absolutely exquisite and delicious if you do them well so um, Let me I them. use yes again it the easy like lazy route you just get a can of beets and you just get I just get the shoestring ones because that way I don't have to chop them up However, if you have a farmer's market around, go get some fresh beets. The flavor is going to be unbeatable. And then I would recommend to actually cut them up again, similar, similar kind of shoestring little, little pieces like that. 
Yeah, since these are canned, though, they're probably going to be somewhat cooked or not. They are, and that's why I'm putting in the last. If so you get if you fresh, got fresh, put it with the others. Correct. If, if you get fresh beets, I would put them in the same time that you put in the carrots so they have a little bit more time to cook. And if you get fresh beets, also make sure when you chop them up, you use some gloves and you use a chopping board you either don't care about or that cleans off very nicely and easy like a stone a glass, chopping board maybe. or glass. Yes, because otherwise it will color absolutely everything. <laughs> um, and it does give the color, really pass it on to the soup and it makes it beautiful. So I just put it in along with the water in there. Make sure you put it all in. You put the water too, okay. Correct, because the water is gonna just help with the flavor. Another thing that you can think about is um, using pickled beets. I know a lot of people have maybe grandmas out there that still pickle a lot of stuff. I actually prefer pickled beets because I love that, that vinegarly, yes, tangy flavor it gives the soup. So actually you'll see what I'll do later to kind of get some of that still, although I don't have pickled beets. But if you have pickled beets, yeah, go for it. Definitely use those. Okay, so now I'm just kind of stirring it up a little bit and you can see still see our meat is still in here so it still continues to is cook. Is it starting to fall apart yet or no? Hopefully let's see here. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's definitely getting soft. All right. Okay so we will turn it back up a little and bring that back to a boil and give the beets and the um, cabbage about another maybe 15 minutes or so to cook through and then you're pretty much done. We're, we'll cook put some seasoning on when we dish it up, is that right? Correct, and before we kind of, before we let it um, get too far, we'll add a little bit more seasoning. Actually, we can probably put a little bit in right now, so to kind of have the flavors mesh a little bit better. You so, let me bring over what I got. I got some fresh parsley from my garden. Can you believe it? My parsley stayed the whole winter and actually survived. I didn't do anything with it, and it actually, Stuck it out and came back beautifully. I can't. Be I cannot believe it. Yes, that's Kansas for you. <laughs> so I've chopped up some fresh parsley, and we're just going to go ahead and put some of that in for now, so it can already kind of cook with that, and then we'll put more in. How did you get it get so closer. small? What technique did you use? <laughs> that was my mother-in-law over the weekend. Oh, she <laughs> I used a tool called my mother-in-law. That's right. I passed it off. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I put in some parsley. I put in some dill and I'm going to leave a little bit out to put in at the very end. Let's put in a little bit more parsley. So we can dress our soup with it maybe too? Yes, and I like to put some of it at the very end so the flavor doesn't all cook out. If you add your herbs and spices, and maybe, I don't know that that's a thing, that's maybe just my experience. I feel like if you add your herbs and spices too soon and then you let them cook for another 20 minutes or so, they almost, the flavor almost I think you're out. right. I, I agree with that. I always thought I'd want to put it at the beginning because everything would absorb it, but it just kind of dies. See, and I usually do a little bit at the beginning and then a little bit kind of when I get closer to the end and then Best I kind of... both worlds. Yes, and then I kind of jazz it up right before I get ready to serve it so they get just hot. I think I saw somewhere that spices and herbs should just get hot but not properly cooked. I don't know. We're all home cooks, so we're just making it up as we go. Okay, so we're just gonna... We like it better this way. That's right, we're just gonna mix it up a little bit and turn it back on and make sure that we let it boil a little bit longer. All right, well, we'll be back when it's time to taste it, I guess. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the Next Tech directory. Welcome back to Local Flavor. We're ready to finish 
seasoning our borscht and give it a taste. That's right. So we had it cooking for about 15 minutes or so. Um, you can see when I put in the beets, it was really purple. The color is cooked out a little bit, so it's more of an orangey color now. If you use fresh beets, it will retain the color much better. So if you care about the color, try and use the fresh one. So it was really pretty. It was. <laughs> so I've already seasoned it a little bit with salt and pepper. I'm just going to add a little bit more and then a little bit of pepper with your fancy shaker over here. Love that you can do it with one hand. Amazing. And then I'm going to add in the rest of the parsley and the rest of the dill. Celery is another good seasoning. You can just use celery flakes or oh, you could even good. use fresh celery if you wanted to. Um, so you got a little bit of leeway there however you want to do it. Okay, so do you know how I mentioned earlier I really like the pickled beets for the tangy flavor? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't use pickled beets. I am actually going to add in a little bit of vinegar now. When you said pickled beets, I was like, no. And then uh -huh. after you said it, I'm like, we should put vinegar in this soup. And I you're am. like, I am. And this is just <laughs> clear, white vinegar. And this is just an Olga thing. It's not that every borscht has to have that. And borscht is really, in Russia, similar to potato salad over here. Everybody has their own version, so um, don't think that the way I'm making is is the absolute right way. Okay, let me try this real quick. See if you got enough seasoning. Mm -hmm. Well, you're out of parsley, so I hope you got enough of that. I think we're good. I'm going to add the rest of the vinegar. I kind of like it tangy. Mm -hmm. I think it will be good. Oh, I think I see one of those little beets. They're all clear now. Mm-hmm. They oh. almost, yeah, they almost look like, again, if you use fresh beets, they retain the color a lot better and you'll have little pink vegetables in your soup, which is kind of neat. Every little girl's dream. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and we are ready to serve. So um, you mentioned I got the earlier. Big spoons. That's right. You mentioned earlier about the meat. So at this point, I would just check. You can do it however you want to. My family always did it family style, where my mom just, if the meat falls apart in the pot, you just kind of break it apart in the pot and everybody gets a good chunk in their bowl. Um, if we had a big roast, my mom would actually take it out and put it on a plate. And so everybody would just kind of cut off their piece and have the meat and put it in their bowl or eat it on the side, however you want to. Um, so I am just going to check on the meat right here. And you can see it kind of starts falling apart. Do you see that? Whoa! Yes. Very nice. Okay. So I'm just going to put some of it on the plate. So we can see some of that. And then I'm going to plate the rest of the bowls. And we're going to add some sour cream in it, cream in it, because that's the best. Adding a dollop of that. Oh, look at that. Sorry. I'm assuming I'm supposed that's to put right. half of the sour cream on each bowl. That's right. <laughs> I like it with a lot. Be careful, it's hot. OK, there you go. Oh, this is mine? Or this is yours? Either way I'll works. Wait for you. Be careful, it's really hot. Ah. Yes. It's actually hot. It <laughs> is. I'm going to go ahead and taste it. Yes. Oh, I love all that dill in there. And that. if you mix the sour cream in it a little bit, it'll cool it off a little bit. I don't taste beets, but oh, shockingly, I don't know what beets taste like. Because <laughs> <laughs> you should be still tasting them. <laughs> Thank you. So okay. this must mean beets are not the devil that I thought they were. No, they certainly aren't. I love the little seasonings. Very good. There you go. That's borscht for you. On a borscht. Hot, yes, on a cold uh, winter night, it's perfect. And as I said, it's better the next day. And it makes you strong like bull. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, join us next time on Local Flavor. We're going to enjoy our borscht.